All right, uh, guys, I'm going to cover a little bit on um, how to plug stuff in different ways. Um, we've got a Spectrum receiver here and a Futaba. Uh, now there's two different plugs. You might have noticed some stuff will not plug in together always. These are Futaba plugs. It's got the little tab there. And this is like a JR style plug. And a lot of times you got to take a knife and just uh, slice that off. A lot of guys don't know that. You just slice that off, and then you've just created a, a JR plug. You just, and, if you notice it, he does it a lot, because yeah. look at his thumb. Yeah, just be careful with the knife. <laughs> so, you know, that's one thing, uh, you know, when, when you get a battery, just look for that little tab. If it doesn't plug in, just slice it off or cut it off. Um, now, the other thing uh, I wanted to cover was uh, a dual steering servo setup, like on the MCDs or... Uh, some guys are doing them with some custom uh, mounting stuff on the Losis. And then they got all these Y adapters going on and just battery box is just crazy. Here's a real easy way to do it and uh, create less connections and a better power flow from the battery to the servos. Um, Kill RC would make this little micro splitter here. This is a uh, sh short wiring one. Here's a longer one, which works good for the Losi. What I'm gonna do, is get my two steering servos here. These will, these black ones will be my steering servos. This will be my uh, throttle. So I'm going to plug these in like so. And then I'm going to plug my battery not into the battery spot on the receiver, which seems weird, but I'm not. that's going to stay empty. I'm going to plug the, the battery or my power have this plugged in. I'm going to hook the power straight to the splitter. So now I've got a really good power flow from my battery straight to my servos. So you're not losing a lot of uh, voltage and current using uh, all these big Y splitters and connections and all that. So now that I've got that, I need to plug this into my steering channel, channel one. And now you can see the battery powers the receiver through this pigtail here. So that's that's why we can leave the battery spot empty. So that's all you need to do for your steering, and you've got ultimate flow here with uh, very little uh, distance for the voltage to travel. And this is going to make your servos uh, a little quicker and uh, a little stronger by minimizing connections. And then your uh, throttle servo would just go in channel two, and then your uh, kill switch would go in channel three. Okay, now an another question that uh, I get a lot is, on the third channel, guys want to like be able to turn lights on and off. If you plug a light right into your third channel, it'll just be on all the time. You can flip the switch all you want on your radio, it's not going to turn that light on and off. The power on the ground, the red and the black wires are always on no matter what you do with your radio. That white wire is what is turning on and off. So if you want to be able to turn lights on and off, you need to get a light controller. It's kind of the brains of everything. And that way you can turn, it has to go between the receiver and the lights. Then you can turn stuff on and off. Uh, another thing you want to watch out for, you know, the lipos are really getting really popular, you get a lot of nice, uh, really uh, strong servos with a little bit higher voltage. You want to make sure the servos you're using uh, can handle the higher voltage, can handle the 7.4 volts, um, or else you could possibly fry them. You know, I've ran just regular 6 volt servos on LiPos for long times and never had a problem, but you know, don't, don't take that from me. It's best to buy high voltage servos if you're going to run a LiPo straight to your servos. Um, and another thing to watch out is on your radio, if you've got regular um, non-digital analog servos, uh, what is the low C5 coming That the throttle is analog and the steering is servo. And if you've got, if, if any servo at all on your car is analog, you have to use a uh, lower resolution on your radio. Like a lot of radios have a high and a low uh, resolution, I think, on the spectrums. It's called frame rate. You've got uh, 15, 
11 and five and a half. Now if you've got an analog servo, you wanna make sure you're using a lower resolution or that, that high resolution signal will burn your servo up. And a lot of guys are buying brand new radios, put them in brand new cars, and they're burning up their servos because they've got their radio speed set too high and those servos can't process all that um, the signal is just too fast for an analog servo. So if you want uh, to run everything as fast as possible, like I do, uh, you know, I want everything on high resolution, super fast, you got to make sure you have all digital servo. So replace that analog servo. As long as everything in your system is digital, you can run uh, high resolution. Like on the Spectrum, it would be 5.5 millisecond frame rate. So to swatch that stuff and you're setting up a new car, make sure you've got all digital servos if you're running on a high frame rate or you'll burn a servo up. Also make sure you got high voltage servos or uh, a light bulb to burn them up. So that's just stuff to look for when you're plugging stuff in and uh, setting up new radios. All right, um, I'm going to make this as simple as possible. We're just going to kind of go over uh, certain endpoints uh, on your radio. Um, usually when you pull one of these out of the box, most people charge battery, they turn it on and they go play. Not really, I advise you, when you pull this out of the box with a stock radio, you're never getting full problem. So the first thing you want to look at, when you turn it on, on the back side of the carburetor, is... This little arm right here. Get rid of the dirt so you can see it. <laughs> can everybody see this arm right here? See how this arm moves? When that arm touches the metal part, that means it's full throttle. When you pull the car out of the box, it'll stop right about there. And that's great for a lot of the beginners because it's not giving you full power. But for that's actually not even wide open. That's still probably about 90% uh, right there. So go into your radio, just push the button, scroll down to your uh, your travel. Holy cow, look at that. What a mess that is. Just kidding. When it starts out highlight, squeeze the throttle. That gives you your throttle. Very, very easily, just roll up on the button on the side until it stops. Open a few times, make sure it stops. Make sure it's not flexing this tube. Make sure your chassis is not flexing because it's trying to push your throttle wide open. Same thing with the brakes. Now a lot of guys will take the Baja and they want more brakes. So what the first thing they do is they get they get rid of that spring and they put a silicone tube there. And then they still turn it up to 150%. What you're doing is you're overworking the servo, which you're going to end up burning your servo. So, best way to do it, what I do when I test whatever vehicle for brakes, I'll, I'll run it and hit the brakes. And I want the rear wheels to slow down as fast as I can. If, it, if, it's, if, it's, if you hit the brakes and it's locked up and it's sliding, you know, you're not going to get any more brakes. You only have rear brakes with this vehicle. So, um, try to set your input on this so it's not overworking the throttle circle. Uh, this is pretty basic, we're very easy for the, uh, for the throttle servo on this. Now, hit points on your radio, or your steering. This gets kind of crucial because you're, 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 you're pushing really heavy vehicles to turn when you want to. A lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll set the car on the table and they steer the car when you have all the weight on the ground. It's not going to steer all the way when it's on the ground. These are heavy cars. What you want to do is put it on a box and you want to steer both ways. When it stops, do the same thing. He has it turned all the way up here. See, see how much I turn that down before it stops to move? You don't want it to completely go all the way, but you want it to be really close on the ball, okay? Same thing with the other side. If you, if you guys look at this arm right here, check this out. See the arm, see the wheels? They're barely turning. Look how much room I got in this right here. This thing's turning about a quarter inch, and the wheels aren't turning. That's going to be hard on your servo. 
two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. It's very crucial that you set your end points. Be proper on, on both ways. Any questions on that? This is pretty pretty simple on the on the, doing your steering or just and your throttle. Any questions on this car at all? Okay, I'll move on to the next car. Uh, where are your five at?